Hello, it's me, Arezu Gaming, and welcome back to another episode of Sandbox Showcase, the series where I talk about problems in Oxygen Not Included and how you can solve them easily and efficiently. So, today I wanted to talk about the Sublimation Station. This is a building that was introduced in Spaced Out to help with the swampy starts, where you start with a load of polluted mud and polluted dirt and polluted water, and everything's super gross and it's all nasty. And there's no algae in this start. The primary source of oxygen is just from everything off-gassing, polluted oxygen, and you deodorizing it with the deodorizer building here. And the sublimation station is a building that lets you feed it with a kilogram per second of polluted dirt, and it outputs 660 grams per second of polluted oxygen. So it speeds up the off-gassing process quite a lot. It only takes 60 watts. And this building is potentially very useful early game, but it's quite difficult to otherwise come into circumstances where you've got a consistent income of polluted dirt to keep running this. Eventually, you're normally going to shift over to using an electrolyzer, but there's two, there's two circumstances really where you would use this. A, if you're on a swampy start and you have hundreds of tons of polluted dirt and polluted mud just around the map, and B, if you are planting a lot of arbor trees and using ethanol distilleries, because the ethanol distillery will produce an absolute ton of polluted dirt as well. If we look at this, um, it turns a kilogram per second of lumber into 500 grams per second of ethanol and three, a third of a kilogram per second of polluted dirt. And this lets you convert that polluted dirt back into more oxygen. And then the third case is you would mine it from space. But what I would suggest is the main use for this is early game on these swampy starts, get your clean oxygen that way. And the focus of this build is going to be housing this sublimation station in an efficient way, hooking up with mechatronics so that once you've got your mechatronics engineer relatively early on, you can just feed the raw solid inputs into this machine and get the clean oxygen out in a space convenient way that will fit in your base and that is going to resulting in dupes doing less trips to refuel the machine. We'll put some ladders in just to show the four tile high room structure that is quite common due to how a lot of the buildings work in this game. And I'm going to show how this build will fit into this. Now one thing to note about this building as well is the oxygen comes out at around 30 degrees C or hotter if the input materials are hotter. So you don't actually need to insulate this at all uh, for a change. So we're just going to make this with granite tiles I suppose. And it's going to be nine tall and seven wide on the inside. So it's going to look like this. Here we go. And then there's going to be two floors. There's going to be the floor where you have the polluted dirt and the polluted oxygen coming in. And then there's the floor where you're going to have the clean oxygen. And they're going to be separated by a liquid layer. But what we're going to do is we're going to do a little trick. We're going to make some airflow tiles. These can be made out of anything. I'm going to put those here, and then we're going to put some mesh tiles. We're going to put them directly above, and we're going to pour a little bit of liquid over here. But first of all, I'm actually going to vacuum this bit out again, because it's important that you vacuum this out. You don't want any clean oxygen in the room, which is going to have the polluted oxygen in it at the start. So let's just check that that's a vacuum. Okay, that's a vacuum. So let's redo this. So we'll put the mesh tiles in here, the airflow tiles in here, and then what you want is just a little bit of liquid that isn't going to off-gas. Brine is fine, water is fine, basically any liquid will do. And you're going to want about sort of five kilograms per tile, not a lot, just on top of each of these bits here. You can just use a bottle emptier for this, you can use the pedestal trick, uh, you can use the move to command, it doesn't really matter how you get the liquid in here. This is not an overly fussy build. So we're going to put that liquid in there and you'll see it's filled the mesh tiles and then we've got the airflow tiles here. And this is very important because of a quirk of how the deodorizer building works. So what we're going to do, first of all, let's actually put the sublimation station. So we're going to put this thing here and then we're going to want to feed this all of the inputs. We're going to want to feed this the polluted dirt it needs to run. We're also going to want to feed the deodorizers up here. Let's put those deodorizers in. I made the seven wide for a reason. So 
as as I've explained, this machine produces six hundred and sixty grams per second of polluted oxygen when it runs at max throughput, and each deodorizer will handle one hundred grams of polluted oxygen. So seven of them will handle seven hundred grams, and this means that this machine will always have one hundred percent uptime, and you're not going to end up building up polluted oxygen in here. You're going to get the oxygen out of this polluted dirt as fast as possible, the clean oxygen. So that's why we need seven of them, and that's why this build ends up being so wide. You have a little bit of extra space in these rooms than usual, so I, I'm, I've got a few ideas of stuff you can fill this room with as well. Uh, but yeah, let's actually put in all the mechatronics. So first of all, we're going to want some receptacles. You don't want to. You don't need to overfill this room with stuff. I wouldn't recommend just dumping all of your polluted dirt with a chute on the floor somewhere. You can do that if you want. But let's use receptacles because they fill it up to a limited amount, and that allows you to add inputs to the room in a more controlled way. So we'll put the conveyor receptacles here. We're going to put the auto sweeper directly above the sublimation station. The sublimation station's weird in that it's only one tile high, so you can put stuff directly above that building. So we're gonna put this here. It doesn't really matter what you make this out of. You can make this out of lead if you want. Um, I probably would. I probably wouldn't just in case you end up in, in case the area ends up heating up in general. But you can use lead in here if you want. So we'll put the auto sweeper there, and you'll you'll notice that this is able to reach the whole room, so no issues involving that. And then I just set up my ladder over here. So now that means I can fill this thing with blue dirt. And we're just going to stick this one down here, I think. So we're going to fill this conveyor receptacle with polluted dirt, and then the auto sweeper is going to load that into the sublimation station without any issues. What I'll do as well is I'll put a little switch in here just so that we can turn the sublimation station on and off uh, without having to break open into the chamber. And what we're going to do as well is because this actually can handle up to 700 grams per second of polluted oxygen, we can also put in a little liquid vent. Put a liquid vent here and dump some polluted water in here to off gas occasionally if we keep the room pressure low enough. And then we can get up to the full 700 grams per second throughput of this setup. So we'll just put a little hydro sensor here as well. Again, it doesn't really matter what refined metal you make these out of, it's absolutely fine. Uh, just set this to like a bu uh, below 100 kilograms or so, so that the sublimation station doesn't flood. But yeah, we can just put in a dev liquid pump in this case. Set up some pipe to go over to that. And then we can just fill this with polluted water. And start evaporating that as well. Again, spreading polluted water out over a wider surface lets you evaporate more of it at once. So that's another advantage of this build being so wide. So that polluted water is going to go in here. And then, once you've got the polluted oxygen here from these two sources, it's going to go into the deodorizers. And what will actually happen is, the deodorizers will pull the polluted oxygen from this airflow tile full of polluted oxygen and convert it to oxygen release it here. So it's actually going to pass through the liquid layer here that's separating the two rooms due to how the deodorizer works. So what you'll end up with is a room with just polluted oxygen here. And so long as these tiles all have access to polluted oxygen, the deodorizers will work and this room will fill with the clean oxygen. And there won't be any need to filter out any gases because the two gases will never mix. So that's why I really like using this liquid layer underneath the deodorizers to get this to work. It's very clean and it doesn't require any gas filtration whatsoever. So then what we'll do as well is we'll just put a auto sweeper here as well and we'll put in a conveyor receptacle over here and we're going to load this with sand because the deodorizers require filtration medium to run. So we're just going to get this one here at the top. And we're going to send this one over. That is going to run through the liquid with the sand. It's going to go up here. And then we'll deliver sand here. The auto sweep will deliver the sand to the deodorizers. And then these deodorizers will turn 133.3 grams per second of sand into 140 
3.3 grams per second of clay. And 90% of the oxygen, uh, polluted oxygen will get filtered into regular oxygen. So we're going to end up with some clay coming out of this. And this is what I'll do with the room as well. We'll handle that clay in a minute. But yes, 700 grams per second of oxygen will come out of this room. So we'll just put in some gas pumps. Again, these don't have to be made out of anything special. This whole setup is room temperature. And you can just put it in your base. If you're just using it for base oxygen, you don't even need to seal this off with gas pumps. I'm putting these gas pumps in so that you can supply Atmo suits or your or your big brain somnium synthesizer machine. But if you're just using this to provide your base with oxygen, you don't need these pumps. Just let the oxygen float out into your base and use an Atmo sensor to restrict these based on the air pressure. In fact, what I would recommend is we can actually put an atmosphere sensor here and an atmosphere sensor here. We can set this one to activate the gas pumps. So we'll get those gas pumps to activate if there's above 1000 grams per tile of pressure in here. And then this atmosphere sensor here can handle the deodorizers. So you can just connect it up like this. And if you want the deodorizers to stop working above a certain gas pressure, like say 2000 grams per, uh, 2, grams per tile, then you can set it like that, you can open up the room, and then your dupes aren't going to get popped eardrums. And that will restrict the, the flow of oxygen so that there's a nice amount of base pressure for your dupes to breathe. But yeah, we'll put the two gas pumps here. You do need two because there's 700 grams per second of gas coming out of here if you want to use all of the oxygen available. And then what you could do as well is you can actually put some... Uh, hanging pots in here or aero pots. I'm just going to put in hanging pots because I'm going to assume that you're doing this in the early game and you don't have diamond yet. But we can spawn in some buddy buds. If you find any buddy bud seeds, they will produce floral scent germs. And if you don't have allergic dupes, you can fill the oxygen with floral scent and then your dupes will get extra stress reduction from that. It helps keep other germs at bay as well. So we'll put in a few of those and we'll just uh, pause it for a little minute. So you can see we've got a little bit of room for these buddy buds up here. And then we, as we're going to result in a load of clay from these deodorizers, what we're actually going to do is we're going to handle the clay and we're going to use the rest of the space in this setup to actually produce ceramic from that clay. So not only are we going to turn the polluted dirt into clean oxygen with this setup, we're also going to turn sand into ceramic, uh, all in the same room. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a conveyor loader in here. And that is going to lead to that's going to lead to a chute that we're going to put down here. So we're going to dump all the clay from this room in here. And I'll just put in a little conveyor bridge. So that can go like that. And we'll bring this around these conveyor receptacles here. So all the clay is going to get dumped in here. And then what we'll do is we'll just put a kiln in here. Again, it doesn't really matter what you make this out of. And we'll also supply this conveyor receptacle here with coal. So that's going to go in here. So this is blue dirt, this is this is coal, and then this is sand. So if you're feeding in your conveyor belts from different sources, if you're feeding this setup uh, with your base, I would just get your dupes to manually deliver to a conveyor loader and set it to manual use and set it to the resource you want and get them to deliver all of your materials in there uh, at a relatively high priority and then gradually those conveyor loaders will feed these conveyor receptacles with the resources you want and not overfill them and then your dupes can just periodically load those uh so so you would just set this to you would just set this to ceramic with the coal and the clay and then you just have another loader in here and that's going to take out all the ceramic and dump that wherever you want. So let's just dump it, I don't know, here I suppose, in the middle. Actually, yeah, we'll just dump it to the side over here. There you go. So then obviously we need to power everything. This build is obviously not going to generate its own power. Power requirements are fairly low. Uh, the main power draw comes from the gas pumps. So if you're not using these because you're just releasing the oxygen into your base, 
there's relatively little power draw from all of this. The build, the sublimation station only uses 60 watts. The deodorizers use 5 watts each. The auto sweepers will run occasionally. Um, but the main draw is going to be from the gas pumps. And if it's 700 grams per second, that's going to be about 340 watts of continuous draw if you're pumping the oxygen. But you can literally just connect this all with a, either a regular wire or a conductive wire if you have the... If you have the refined metal, I'm just going to use conductive wire. But you can use a, you can use a regular, you can use a regular wire if you want to. It's not an issue, especially in the early game. You can just use a regular wire. And then we'll just plug this into a dev generator so you can see how this works. And then the actual gas, we're, we're just going to set up a little pipe here. Again, this is going to come out at 30 degrees. It's not going to get hot in here very much at all. This building generates 1.5 k of heat. The deodorizers generate 0.6 kd to use of heat each. Uh, obviously, the auto sweepers generate a little bit. The kiln will generate 20 kd to use of heat when it's running, but the kiln isn't going to be running continuously off of the clay output of seven deodorizers. So the overall amount of heat is low enough that if you just have like a thermal reg thermoregulator cooling your base or any kind of cooling in your base at all, any type of liquid pumping into your base, that's already cold. It's going to absorb enough of the heat that you don't really have to worry about it. So that's not really an issue. We'll just put a vent up here as well. Um, you can make this a regular gas vent um, if you're worried about overpressurizing. But again, if you're worried about overpressurizing, just use the automation on the diode risers for that, really. And then that's pretty much everything set up. So I'm just going to get the dupes to dig up some materials of the types you want and then you'll see it in action so i'll see you in a minute so we're back we've uh, spawned in all the required materials so you can just set the kiln to generate ceramic it will take 100 kilograms of clay and 25 kilograms of coal to produce 100 kilograms of ceramic this operates every 40 seconds so this is going to consume 2.5 kilograms per second of clay and you'll notice that these machines do not generate that much so they generate about 0 0.9 kilograms per second of clay if they're continuously supplied. So this is going to be running for about a third of the time. It's probably going to produce about 7 kDTUs per second of heat on average. So factor that in when you're thinking about how much heat this is producing. Uh, but yeah, we've got the room running. We've got some polluted water in here. Uh, some polluted oxygen has already spawned in. This machine is running. You'll notice that occasionally this tile with some polluted water in it is going to just turn to polluted oxygen because the gas will come out of the machine on this tile, but that doesn't really affect how this runs. And provided that you keep the gas pressure in here relatively low, what you can do is you can actually, instead of using a manual switch for this, you can... Yes. Instead of using a manual switch for this, you can use an atmo sensor again. You can set that to operate if it's below, say, 1,000 kilograms pressure. And then that will ensure that the polluted gas, the polluted water will always off gas. And then that will run. So we've got our three receptacles filling up. You can see the sand is running underneath here. I like to run it through the water just so it's it's doing some extra thermal conduction in this room. Again, there's not a lot of heat in here, but you might as well just try and even it out with your input materials. So it's going to take a while for the auto sweeper to start fully loading everything with sand. Uh, these these things require 300 and these things can be filled up with up to 320 kilograms of filtration medium at a time so it's going to take a while for this to get fully started if you're just running at an auto sweeping but the reality is you can if you use liquid locks on these rooms you can just have your dupes come in and do this to start and then put all the mechatronic stuff in later once you've researched it you don't necessarily need to start with the mechatronics but this is just so that your dupes don't have to worry about it once they're doing other more important things on your swampy asteroid. Yeah, you can see now these deodorizers are bringing in the polluted oxygen from down here. This room is just full of clean oxygen. There's no way mechanically any polluted oxygen can get into this room because of the liquid seal here. So you're not going to have to worry about gas filtration at all. We've got the buddy buds here, so they're producing plenty of floral scent germs. And then as this starts operating, once the pressure gets high enough, that will go out there. Uh, what you'll do is you'll just set this conveyor loader to uh, clay, so cultivatable soil. And then you can just set this to ceramic. 
and then you can set this to raw minerals. So this is going to start producing some ceramic as well. Let you dig this up. And then once enough clay has been produced by the setup, it's going to go in the kiln. You can just set this to raw minerals and it's going to take all the ceramic and just dump it out here at the top. So now you can see everything's running properly. Uh, it takes a while to fill all of these geodorizers because it's one auto sweeper doing all of the work, but eventually it will get everything done and this machine will spin up to the max capacity. Yeah, this one still needs to be filled. Now you can see the gas pumps operating. Gas is coming out of here. It's got a nice floral scent germs. Um, obviously, if you're pumping it into ammo suits, the floral scent germs aren't really going to be relevant. These plants are mostly for if you're pumping it into your base or... And in that case, these gas pumps are mostly being used to pump it to vents at different points on the map. If the vents are too far away, you might not get the floral scent germs. Some people have reported that. Uh, but it's mostly optional. It's mostly just something to put in the extra space, to be honest. But you can see with this sort of 9x7 setup, we have the uh, sublimation station producing all of the polluted oxygen from the polluted dirt. All of that is being immediately converted to clean oxygen by the deodorizers. We're putting sand into the deodorizers and converting them to clay. That is being fed into here with some coal to produce ceramic, which is very useful as an insulator. It's an excellent insulator material, and having consistent access to it in the early game with something like this can be very useful. This is this is something else on the map. Don't worry, <laughs> this isn't overheating. Um, but yeah, if you look at the temperature, it's all staying around sort of room temperature. It's not going to cause you any issues in that regard. Uh, the ceramic will come out a little bit hot, but again, it's an excellent insulator, so it's not really going to cause any issues. You, you can see the lump of ceramic here. Uh, but yeah, that's the build. It's it's pretty simple. It, just relying on this uh, trick with the deodorizer to avoid gas filtration. One thing I would say as well is you can actually handle the infectious polluted oxygen guys in a very similar way. And I'll just talk about that quickly. So let's just uh, remove some stuff over here. Just vacuum this all out. And then what I'll do is I'll spawn in a geyser. Spawn in an infectious polluted oxygen vent. So let's put that here. This one is going to generate about 380 grams per second of polluted oxygen at 60 degrees C. It does have slime lung germs. These vents are not overly good. You can see that if you look at my geyser tier list video. But they are occasionally useful. They usually, on average, produce about enough oxygen for one duplicate consistently. So if you've got an asteroid where you're not trying to permanently habitate it and you're just trying to build some stuff with like a single dupe, maybe a loner, getting one of these online can be very handy and solve your oxygen problem without having to have an, a water source or anything like that. So you can very easily apply this deodorizer principle to this geyser as well. So if we just make this room, say, five wide, have it go up here. Again, we'll just seal this bit off here. And then we'll vacuum out this room just to make sure it will uh, work. You'll obviously want to vacuum this out before you do it to make sure you don't get any trace gases. If you have any trace gases in here, this is going to stop working. So you absolutely need to vacuum this out. So in this case, we'll put the airflow tiles here and then mesh tiles here. And then we can just put in the, the brine again or whatever liquid you have that isn't going to off gas and isn't going to boil. The oxygen has so little extra heat energy in it. It's not actually going to be an issue. And I'll explain why that will be in a minute as well. But we'll seal it off with the, with the liquid layer. And then what we'll do is we'll put four deodorizers in. So this can handle 400 grams per second of polluted oxygen. Sometimes these geysers will produce more than 400 grams per second in bursts. What you want to make sure is that the amount that it's over by, so say this is producing 600 grams per second when it's, when it's erupting, you're gonna have a net income of 200 grams per second of oxygen in this room. You want to make sure the total capacity of the room, including the airflow tiles, is great uh, is greater than what would result in five kilograms per tile of pressure in here otherwise this is going to stop erupting so in this case the room is a five by five so you could have 125 
kilograms of polluted oxygen in here before this is going to stop erupting. And if this geyser was erupting at 600 grams per second and it had an eruption period of 250 seconds, 600 minus 400 from the deodorizers is 200 grams per second times up by 250 and you get 50 kilograms. So this, this room is not going to fill from a single eruption and the deodorizers will be able to handle the polluted oxygen from the previous eruption before the next one comes in. Uh, depending on the timings here, of course. But generally, four deodorizers will be enough to handle this comfortably. So again, we're just going to plug this into whatever we have over here. That's fine. And what I would recommend specifically for these, because they have the slime lung germs, is I would put a planter box in here, and I would put a wheeze wart in here. If you have a wheeze wart seed somewhere on the map, and on swampy starts, you will often have frozen biomes, like quite near your printing pod. So wart seeds are plentiful on this start where you're going to be handling a lot of polluted dirt anyways. So if we just put in a wart seed over here, so plug this in here, you will need to periodically dump phosphorite on this as well to get it to grow. So let's just spawn in some of that. You'll get your Phosphorite from your Drekos. Uh, so when you're raging Drekos, make sure to save up your Phosphorite. You can find this on the map in Jungle Biomes as well. But make sure to save it so you can fertilize Wart Seeds. So let's put in an Auto Sweeper. You need to put that... two. You need to put that three tiles above the planter box to make sure that you can actually put the, the Wart Seed in here. You know, let me place that. No. The dupe has to be able to access the seed for the thing to work like that. It's kind of funny. Right, so there is the wart seed. Look this in. As you can see, the polluted oxygen is coming out with the slime lung germs. But because we have the liquid layer here, this gas is just from the <laughs> this gas is just from the environment, so just ignore that. But because we have the liquid layer here. Uh, none of the slime lung is getting out. So here you can see we've got the polluted oxygen vent operating. It's producing the slime lung germs. The oxygen is going straight into this room and is immediately being cleaned. You can see we've got the wheeze wart here. So even though this polluted oxygen has lots of germs on it, or some of it has lots of germs on it, the radiation from the wheeze wart is killing the germs very quickly. If we actually look in the germs overlay, you can see... There's not any germs over here. Even from the tiles down here where the slime lung is spawning in. The germs are all dying very quickly to the radiation. You see they're popping in, popping out. Even this level of radiation is enough to effectively kill the germs. So just having the weasel here will make sure that you're never going to have any slime lung germs in here at all. But the next step, of course, is to actually get the deodorizers to work. So we're going to have to put some more conveyor receptacles in here. Uh, you'll just want to dump some sand into here so that so that everything actually operates. So let's just put it in like this, I suppose. So yeah, we'll feed these deodorizers with some sand. And then that water sweeper is going to load those. They're immediately going to start processing all of the polluted oxygen here. The germs are immediately getting deleted by the radiation from the wheeze wart. Even a very small amount of radiation will kill germs very quickly. So the germs are actually mostly dying in here. But they'll never get to this room with the clean oxygen in it. So that's absolutely fine. We'll start loading up all of these deodorizers so they can handle the throughput. As you can see, even a full eruption of this one didn't quite overpressurize the room. So generally, you've got a fair bit of leeway with these. You could probably have less deodorizers if your if your vent is less powerful than the max power you can get than the max group that you can get out of these. But I think four is a good sweet spot. And then what we'll do again is you can you can just put a conveyor loader in here, get the get the clay out of here, and then you can just dump that wherever you're dumping wherever you're dumping the clay, so we can just bring that down here or something. Yeah, we'll just bring it into the room that <laughs> all the other clay is being handled in. 
So just set that to cultivatable soil. Plug that in with all the rest of this stuff. And then what you can do is you can fit a gas pump in here and you can start pumping that out. Uh, put some automation in if you have room. We don't we don't really have room in here, but again, you don't really have to close this off, to be honest. Like, in fact, what I'll do at this point now that everything's running is I'll just remove these tiles here. I'll rebuild this wire there. Because you can be confident there's not going to be any germs in here. We've, we've got the floral scent germs from this thing as well. Let's plug this back in and get this to run at the same time. There you go. Uh, so what you can do is you can put a gas pump over here and then put like an atmo sensor over here so that it's not too bad. It's not pumping when it's low, low pressure and you're not getting the throughput out of the gas pump. And then you can send that off wherever you want it because you've got the deodorizers nearby. You're not going to have a lot of polluted oxygen nearby because it's it's going to get cleaned up by the deodorizers pretty quickly. In this case we do because the, the whole map is sort of um, off gassing with the polluted oxygen, but just make sure there's no polluted dirt or polluted mud tiles there, and that'll be absolutely fine. So we'll just plug this in again. And then again, you can just use another atmo sensor and you can plug it into these things. And then if the pressure is getting above what you want uh, for your popped eardrums, so you can keep it below 2000 uh, grams per tile pressure, you can just turn these off. And then you can handle this uh, blue oxygen bent and you can get this hooked up right away and just get an extra dupes worth of oxygen using the same principle that you have from this. And all you need is the extra wheeze wart. Now, one thing I would say as well is if you're making ceramic out of the clay that you get from this, you're going to need to find some coal. And if you're on a swampy star, we look in the consumable ore. It's this purple stuff here. You, you, you may have to go into a temperate biome to find it, but there is there is, there is coal on this map. You can, you can also teleport across to get your coal. Uh, it's not going to be immediately available, but you will be able to find it fairly quickly. So you can start making ceramic with this setup fairly quickly. So one more thing I would say about these infectious polluted oxygen vents is regarding the heat flux. When this thing is erupting, it's going to be producing between 0.3 and 0.6 usually kilograms per second of 60 degrees polluted oxygen and the heat capacity of polluted oxygen is about 1 kd to EU per kilogram per degree C. So overall while it's erupting it's going to be producing somewhere between 9 and 18 kd to use per second of heat. Now a wheeze wall in pure oxygen is going to provide about 5 kd to use per second of cooling. So while the geyser is active the room is going to be heating up a little bit in general. But when it's inactive or when it's dormant, the room is going to cool back down again. The average throughput of these things is about 0.1 kilograms per second, accounting for its dormant period. So that's going to result in about 3 kDTUs of cooling being required in general. It can be a little bit more, it can be a little bit less. But overall, the Weeds Wart does manage to just about keep the, the geyser itself cool. Also, we fit in all the kiln infrastructure in here. One thing that I would suggest is because the vent is producing a relatively small amount of gas and that's immediately going in these deodorizers, I would suggest just putting a little bit of liquid in here to conduct heat with the kiln uh, so the kiln doesn't overheat. Because this room will be in a near vacuum when this geyser isn't erupting. And then this lets you fit in all of the infrastructure over here. This kiln will start running. And then once you dump a little bit of coal in a conveyor receptacle here, and then we can just take the we can just take the ceramic out of here and put it in here again. Again, you are gonna want to dump the ceramic somewhere a bit hotter so you can leak the heat out of it, not in your base, because the ceramic is gonna come out on about 80 Cs. One final thing to mention is the the hot polluted oxygen vent. So if I show you here, yeah, this hot polluted oxygen vent. What this does, instead of producing germs with the polluted oxygen, has the same throughput as the infectious polluted oxygen vent, but the polluted oxygen comes out at 500 degrees. So in this case, what you do, you wouldn't need the wheeze wall. That wouldn't quite cut it for cooling. And you're not using it for cooling, you're using it for radiation anyways. I was going to actually discuss taming these hot polluted oxygen vents, but all you need to do is use the deodorizer trick that we're already using here and then you just need to run some 
some cooling liquid past it. I wouldn't even bother using a steam turbine to cool these like we did with the hydrogen vent because the the thermal capacity of polluted oxygen is half that of the hydrogen. So this, there's still relatively little heat energy actually coming out of this thing, even though it's 500 degrees C. So you can just cool this by running like literally any liquid past it. Like if you're feeding, if you're feeding pinch of peppers, just run the polluted water that's going to your pinch of peppers past this. It'll heat it up by a couple of degrees and you can just feed the slightly warmer polluted water to your pinch of peppers because they can handle it up to 85 C and they'll just delete the polluted water. And that will handle all of the heat from this hot polluted oxygen vent. So that's my take on these. I wouldn't even really bother taming these. Just literally run liquids past it. You can even run solids past it to absorb the uh, absorb the heat if you want. Like you run <laughs> refined metal past it and then build stuff with it. I don't know. It's just like, it's not worth taming. It's not enough heat to worry about. But yeah, those are my thoughts on the sublimation station and the infectious polluted oxygen vent and how you can sort of tame those and manage them in a pretty well automated way without your dupes having to do a load of work and just getting the maximum throughput out so you can get your clean oxygen on this swampy start as fast as possible. Again, you can use the sublimation station with the polluted dirt you get from ethanol distillers as well but i think the main use is just using it on these swampy starts we just start with hundreds of tons with it you might have other uses for the polluted dirt that you produce from your arbitraries you might want to feed that to poke shells and ranch those or you might even want to boil it or something i don't know but yeah So yeah, that summarizes uh, the build, how you handle sublimation stations and the infectious polluted oxygen vent. If you like this video, feel free to like and subscribe for more guides or content like this, where I talk about these problems in oxygen not included and how you can solve them. Let me know uh, how you've used your sublimation stations on your runs, whether they've saved your butt or whether you've not bothered using them or whatever. We do have a Discord where we hang out, we post builds and memes, mostly oxygen not included, but there are some other games on there. And I stream Oxygen Not Included on Twitch, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Fridays usually, around 7.30 to 10.30 GMT. So feel free to go over there and have a look. All of the VODs from Twitch are also saved on this channel. We're currently doing two playthroughs. One is Mouth Breeders only on a Forest Star. And the other is Badlands with loads of dupes where we're doing a load of geotuning nonsense. So if, if either of those sounds appealing to you, feel free to go check out Twitch when I'm live. Yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now. Whisker sends thanks to the following Twitch subscribers and YouTube members. Deadeye XL GC Fungus Neo Deus Machina The Max Not Binary And Uglavisk